afternoon, folks. Big Bo with RVs with Big Bo at Parkway RV Center. Got a, another nice Class C motorhome we're going to review today, guys. And this is a 2016 Thor Chateau 31E. And a nice one at that, guys. This is a uh, the bunkhouse floor plan. This baby is loaded. Only 38,000 miles. It's got the full wall slide, bunkhouse floor plan, outside television, hydraulic leveling jacks. How often do you see that in a Class C? Let's review this thing. Really nice one. Um, let's take a look. Now, it's not going to be perfect, but it does have some really nice upgrades that previous owners have made to it, and I'll go over it the best I can. Got some great-looking tires on it. Um, Got a lot of trade left to them and i'll point out anything good and bad a couple little things on the inside we got to fix i got the good looking forward front end looks like the blue ovals faded which which is not too uncommon now they did add a trailer hitch to the front and a lot of people wonder why do people do that well a lot of people put a bicycle rack up there or a lot of people use that to launch a boat you know a lot of people don't realize it but you can launch a boat with a Class C motorhome. You tow it behind it, of course. When you get to the boat ramp, you uh, unhook it, hook it there, and you actually pull it. And I, and I know it's crazy, guys, but I've done it myself, and it's not that hard to do. And, uh, you know, like a bass boat or a small boat. I, you're not going to do it with a big boat, obviously, but it's actually pretty cool. I uh, got some of the bays open. Uh, got the polyethylene coated bays. You can just take a hose to it to clean them out. This is your hydraulic pump for your uh, for your a uh, uh, jack system. You do have an outside television, propane system. You've got the mega storage. I like that little sticker. I don't know where y'all are at, but right here, gas is coming down pretty good. I mean, it's. Uh, I've seen it for 289 locally, so it's it's getting down there pretty good now. It's within 40, 50 cents of what I call normal for our area. Anything under 250, I consider normal. Built on a 40, 450 chassis, 6.8 Triton V10, 305 horsepower, 420 pound feet of torque. Does have an 8,000 pound tow capacity hitch on the back. Now, do I recommend putting 8,000 pounds behind this RV? No. Uh, I would probably, just to be safe, max it out 5,500 to 6,000 pounds. Um, you know, the outside looks good. It does have on the back. You can tell the back has been exposed to the sun a lot more than the rest of the RV. So you do have a little cracking on the stripes, a little bit of wrinkling. But, guys, this is a seven-year-old motorhome. Don't, you know, don't expect it to be absolutely 100% perfect for this price that I'm selling it for. Look at this huge, huge slide out. It is the three tracks slide out system. Does have a 4KW Onan generator powering everything up inside with 300 some odd hours on it. So hours right in line with the miles. Got the AC cranking. Backup camera. Cab over looks great. Notice overlapping cap and no window. I like to see that in a Class C. Side windows, maybe not so much. I'm just not a fan of front windows. That's just a, that's just a problem just waiting to happen with leaks. And the fact that you've got the overlapping cap instead of the straight edges where most leak problems occur, the fact that you don't have a, a seam right here, it's way back here, that's going to give you a lot less trouble down the road. Nice power awning that works great. Outside speakers plug-ins furnace before we go inside guys let me pop a drone up let's do a roof shot show you some cool upgrades on the roof hang tight i'll be right back all right everybody i'm starting to get my groove back with that drone like i said i haven't used it in a while so been practicing a little bit better let's look inside this 31e now guys there's a couple of things inside i got to do to it and i'll show you as we go along but as i step inside that air feels great furniture looks great no flaking furniture here um 38,000 miles 
Uh, now the TV, it does have the optional entertainment center, so you do lose your bed up here, but you got bunk, so I don't think that's that big a deal. Uh, this TV right here works great, but the shocks that hold this flat and hold it tight against this are not working, so I'm going to have to put a couple of shocks on that so it doesn't do that, and it stays like this nice and flat so don't worry about that we're going to put that on you do have a nice fantastic vent fan i like all the led lighting 82 inch interior ceiling height and a nice open floor plan thanks to this full wall slide before we get to the cab show you some of the goodies up here 354 hours on the generator obviously running right now it is a gas electric six gallon water heater lci electronic leveling uh remote control so that you can uh zero 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 from here you can put your awning out levelers crank your generator turn your lights on do a lot of uh, pretty neat stuff you do have your uh, leveling system so you can see how, what your level is and uh, you do have the auto level feature now guys i'm gonna go ahead and tell you and you, anybody that has ever owned one of these i don't care how much you try you cannot get these auto levels to get exactly perfect you're always going to be a little bit off and you have to just manually you can you can get you in the neighborhood with the auto level feature but you're always going to be an inch or so off you're going to have to fine tune it with the manual buttons i mean it's just something that's been an issue with auto level ever since they came out years ago so i mean you can calibrate them to your blue in the face and uh they never will get exactly 100 percent perfectly on level without a little bit of human intervention. And all you gotta do is just press the button for the jack that you wanna go down forever how long you want it to go down. Uh, front cab, I'll go ahead and crank it up. It might turn the TV off. 33,805 miles, so less miles than I thought. 33,805. Um, ice cold dash air. Got the HDMI hookups, USB chargers built in. Front seats look great. Tilt cruise, power windows, power locks. Got the uh, plastic wood grain kit, but hey, it adds a little touch of class, doesn't it? <laughs> nice. But anyway, oh, everything looks good up here. Heated power mirrors, all that good stuff. Uh, does have a, a sound bar. It, now, one thing you may notice from the roof, it does have a satellite dish, and here's a direct TV, so I'm assuming, even though now everybody uses streaming service, but I'm assuming that, you know, it is aftermarket, so I can't obviously guarantee any aftermarket equipment, any shape, form, or fashion that somebody's added, but I'm assuming that um, um, you could probably get some kind of service if the equipment is not outdated, which, there's always a possibility of that, but that's something you'll have to check into yourself. Um, you do have a table booth that makes a bed. Sofa makes a bed, so there's four sleeping four right here. A lot of wide space through here. Very, very nice. Uh, coat closet. Uh, multiple USB chargers right here, so I guess you can just set your phones and tablets up there while it charges. Refrigerator, got, um, I guess you could call that a pantry, maybe. Guess you can call it what you want. <laughs> Pretty deep, though. And, yeah, they got the little shocks to hold it up. Uh, this one's starting to get cold, but it's cold enough that I know it works. And, yes, guys, even at this crazy price, crazy low price of $59.9, we're still going to include our major systems inspection which uh, includes making sure the slide outs, refrigerator, freezer, generator, roof airs, all that stuff get the operating temperature more. And speaking of price guys, let me pop an NADA up real quick. Um, hang on, I'll be right back so you can see the NADA base retail with no added options, just adjusting for the miles and we're way, way, way under book, way under what I should be selling it for, but hang on one second. So you can see guys, we're not playing around on the price. $10,000, over $10,000. In fact, we're just barely above low retail. And here's the thing guys, 
if you go to rv trader and i won't even i won't i won't try to pause the video for that i think i still got that pulled up on my phone if not i'll pause the video and pull it back up but I'll show you something right here you know i use rv trader and nada in combination which guys with my prices nada ain't nothing to beat but that's easy but rv trader is is kind of the quintessential there's over 200,000 RVs for sale in RV Trader, and that's kind of what all the dealers and for sale by owners, that's kind of just like the generic go-to for people who want to buy and sell an RV. That's kind of what everybody goes to nationwide. So that's the resource that I use and I recommend everybody use to make sure their price is in line with everybody else's. Well, our, our policy and our way of selling is different than most other dealers. I want to make sure our price, if it isn't the lowest, is one of the lowest on RV Trader. I mean, that's why we sell five, six hundred, you know, RVs a year, guys. If you're going to pay the same price here as everywhere else, why would you travel hundreds, sometimes thousands of miles in some cases, to buy from us if you're going to pay the same price as everybody else? So anyway, I typed in. They, they've got a, a price checker tool that anybody can use. It's 100% free. I've got it saved on my phone, and I've got. I typed it in uh five listings for a 30 a 2016 chateau 31 e class c and you can see guys they don't vary much in price the lowest price one on rv trader until this one hits and this is as of today right now video production lowest price one is 69,000. highest one is 77,950. so that's only uh nine thousand dollars between the lowest and the highest average 73 472 so if i was going to be like everybody else that's what i would be advertising for but i'm not advertising for that price i'm not advertising the highest priced one i'm not advertising the lowest priced one at least right now until this hits in about 24 to 48 hours we know what my price is y'all saw it in the windshield 59.9 that is a uh, ten, you know, uh, nine thousand dollars under the lowest priced one on RV Trader. So, when you go, when somebody goes on RV Trader, won't say 2016 Chateau 31E Buckhouse. Do you think they're going to start looking at the highest priced one first, and then trying to buy? And look at this, guys. The one. Well, I'm not going to show it to you because it's the dealer's ad. The one for $69,000 doesn't even have full body paint or jacks. But it's 10, 000, almost $10,000 more. Not to mention, guys, when you buy from a dealership, they're not just going to let you buy it for that advertisement. You're not going to come in there with a cashier's check, cash, wire transfer, or whatever for that advertised price. No, guys. They're going to add on fees, you know, even if you just don't even forget about your taxes for a minute. They're going to add on fees and upsells. I mean, you might as well add another ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars at advertised price. That would be like me advertising this same fifty nine nine, but you having seventy five thousand dollars in it by the time you leave with it. That's not how we operate, guys. It's fifty nine nine plus applicable sales tax. If you're a Georgia resident, Georgia residents only. There's a fifty to a hundred dollar highway impact fee. And if you're a Georgia resident, there's a 50, uh, 40 to $50 tag and title fee. That's Georgia residents only. That's it. If you pay cash for this thing, you come from out of state, you bring me 59 9 and that's your out-the-door price. No upsells, no fees, no surprises, no games, no gimmicks. You can bring me a check for 59 9 a cashier's check, I mean, wire transfer. I'll take cash, but I prefer you don't travel with that kind of money. It's a safety risk plus security risk for my employees to have to handle that kind of money and take actually physically take it to the bank we'd much rather have a cashier's check we can verify or you have you do a wire transfer but i'm not going to turn it down if you bring hundred dollar bills i just prefer not to uh take it i prefer other forms of payment um plus less paperwork involved because guys it is kind of dangerous to travel with large amounts of currency and from places you wouldn't think including the police because they can, in some states, they will actually take it. If they pull you over with out-of-state tags and they find out you're carrying large amounts of currency, they can actually seize that currency and you have to go to court to prove that you weren't up to an illegal activity. It happened a few years ago. Some folks that were traveling from up north got
got pulled over in Tennessee for speeding. Um, and I'm not trying to scare y'all because like I said, I will not turn down cash, but I just prefer to take other forms of payment, but I'm not gonna turn it down. So don't think I'm not gonna welcome you if you bring $100 bills, but and I'm not gonna be like other dealers and charge you more for it either. But a few, uh, a few years ago, a couple came down and uh, older couple, they brought cash for some weird reason, even though we asked them to bring cashier's check. They um, got pulled over in Tennessee, Nashville or, or Nashville area, somewhere like that. Tennessee Highway Patrol, and I, you know, I, I, we support police officers, guys, I, and I love police officers. I got police officers in my family. My grandfather that started this place was a police officer before in Chattanooga, Tennessee, before he started this place. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, and I know they're just doing what they're told to do, but um, got pulled over, and of course, being from out of state, they were from Ohio, or I believe, if I remember right, or Indiana, I, I, I'm not sure, but they, um, the Police officer asked them if they were carrying any currency, large amounts of currency, and, and of course they weren't hiding anything. They had no reason to lie to the officer, so they said yes. And the officer actually uh, asked to see it, and they showed it to him. The officers confiscated confiscated that money, even though these folks were in their 60s, 70s. They actually had to wait about 60 days and had to get a lawyer and, and couldn't buy the RV because they didn't have the cash because the cops had it <laughs> and uh, they actually had to get a lawyer from their home state or, or had to go home and hire a lawyer in tennessee and go to court and actually had to prove that they weren't using that cash for an illegal activity even though we sent and made phone calls on their behalf stating what they were doing and, and sent paperwork and everything else and affidavit i mean did everything we could to assure the police that because i mean these folks have never been in trouble with the law all their life and uh, i mean just just an innocent older couple they weren't right up to anything illegal but they were just older folks and they thought you know cash was supposed to impress or or whatever i, I don't know i don't i don't get it but um i believe in carrying you know when you're traveling cap you know have you know a few hundred bucks on you just in case for an emergency but not you know thirty forty thousand dollars but um, anyway, they had to go to court. They got their money back eventually, but it took about 60 days and they had lawyer costs and all that stuff. And of course they didn't get any of that back. And of course, you know what they got back? And this is what's so sad. They got cash and they got a check back for their cash. <laughs> yeah, they actually winded up buying one from us, but it was a different one because that one was long sold by that point. But I just, I'll never forget that. And that's why I always tell people when you're traveling from out of state, it's not smart to carry cash um it's just you know not that it's just and also the chance of getting robbed or something like that so uh because you got no way to prove that you had money on you and then even then i mean you're not you know if you you get robbed from a cashier's check your bank will reissue that check um you know if they haven't if it hasn't been processed yet or something like that but if you lose cash you know there's no way to get that back it's gone you lost it i mean there's no refund for cash you know, uh, you know, wire transfer secure, uh, 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 cashier's check secure until it's deposited and clears. So, I mean, you, you've got some recourse on that, but it's just it's just a safety thing, guys. But I'll never forget that about that about that older couple. And I don't tell that story very often, but uh, but again, guys, I'm not saying I'm going to take your cash, but I'm just I like to always kind of warn people, and it's just for a personal thing for me i don't mind it but taking cash or counting it or taking it to the bank it's just uh you know i just worry about y'all more than anything i mean i don't nobody's gonna mess with me i'm a big guy i mean i mean nobody's gonna mess with me if i carry cash into the bank but uh i just worry about some of y'all so anyway <laughs> so we got four up here to sleep got solid surface countertops back to the tour Three burner stove top. You've got a Whirlpool, a big over the range microwave. Air conditioner's ice cold. Got a, doesn't even look like it's been cooked on, cooktop, which is pretty much a decoration from the previous owners because they didn't cook on it. Uh, refrigerator looks good. Now we do have to get a couple of mattresses for the bunks. Obviously the previous owners use these for storage shelves, which a lot of people do. A lot of people buy bunk houses just for extra storage, not for sleeping. I know that sounds crazy, but when you think about it, you can almost double 
your interior storage if you use these for tubs, storage containers, things like that. But they did leave the TVs. Uh, you got a little t uh, little uh, TV DVD players, and you got one down here too. So you got both your TVs. So this thing's got one, two, three, four, five televisions in it. So if you're a TV junkie, this is definitely one for you. Uh, we're going to walk through the bathroom. You can get to it from the bat the bedroom or from back here. And you do have a RV toilet. Medicine cabinet, sink, skylight, um, surround tub looks good. It's not bleached yellow from the sun or anything like that. You do have a solid sliding door for privacy. We're going to step back here. You've got a television up there. Now, another thing that they added, guys, is a second air conditioner. Now... This is a 30 amp unit. So what does that mean? That means, yes, you have a second AC, but that also means that you can't run both at the same time. It's a 30 amp unit. Uh, you're gonna ha either run one or the other, e either on your generator or when you plug plugged up to shore power. Um, you cannot run both units on AC. Now you might be able to run one on fan, one on compressor but I, the only advantage of a second air conditioner on a 30 amp unit if you really like it cold at night and you want to turn your front ac off and just have this on back here for the people in the bedroom to really get it cold at night um, other than that and this is a 13.5 i'm assuming but this was added by the previous owners and we will check it make sure it works but i've just got the main unit on right now cooling it because it's it's actually routed through the duct work so i'm actually feeling air in here from the main ac and i can see how they've ran the wiring and everything like that so you know there is a little bit of uh modifications in here but it's not bad you do have a queen island bed um i'm not too crazy about how they ran their wiring for their uh satellite they've added but i guess it works <laughs> uh <laughs> it didn't go all the way through they just ran it through the wall I would have done that a little bit neater, I think, or found a different way to route it, but each their own, I guess. I guess that way you've got extra line for your slide out when it comes in. Well, at least they left the bed, bed spread in here. And uh, some sheets and a safe. Well, but anyway, um, and yes, guys, we will uh, do our major system inspection, even though we got the lowest priced 30, uh, 2016 31E Chateau in the country. We're still going to include our major systems inspection, which includes the following systems. Uh, we're going to make sure that slide out works, and it's a great big slide out. It starts right here and goes all the way to the back wall. We'll make sure that goes and works like it's supposed to. We'll make sure that both roof airs get cold like they're supposed to. We'll make sure generator functions like it's supposed to. We'll make sure that the refrigerator and freezer gets operating temperature. We're gonna check the plumbing systems for you. Make sure they work. Make sure your water heater works. Make sure your faucets, spigots, toilet, all that stuff works. Water pump, make sure it works. <coughs> We're going to uh, check the drivability of it, which we'll do that here in a little bit when we drive it. Only thing I'm worried about is that TV making a lot of noise. Um, We'll play that by ear, literally. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we, we guarantee steps to work. Um, and of course, guys, anything else is up to you to check or not check. Everything else is sold as is. We guarantee those major systems to work at time of sales. And of course, my salespeople can clarify any of this that I've said and answer any questions you have. Now, what I do, guys, is I go out here before I shoot my videos and I spend a little time in here and I kind of go and do my own little inspection for you. You may have noticed I did the drone shot so you can see the roof. Roof looked good. Um, I put the awning out because we don't cover awnings in our checkout, but I do on my checkout. Awning works great. It looks great. Canvas looks good. So, you know, there's no sense checking something that works. You can't fix something that ain't broke. So that's good. Um, 
I've checked all the lights, all the lights come on, they're all LEDs, so there's nothing really to worry about there. So really the only thing we have left to do to it is we're gonna put a couple of shocks on that TV and uh, put a couple of bunk mattresses in it and it really, just our standard checkout, it should be good to go. And again, guys, our standard checkout includes the slide out roof airs. And even though the dash air works great, we don't cover it, but it does work great. So no, again, no worries there can't fix something that ain't broke um we'll check make sure the roof airs work refrigerator freezer plumbing steps and drivability and um everything else is up to you you need to come out look at it yourself before purchase inspect it for yourself and or hire a third party inspection service guys that is the great and I, I don't get paid to say this i'm just telling you from if you're not educated on rvs or have a lot of RV experience, that, that is the easiest and simplest decision to make. I would get a RV inspection on a brand new RV and or a used one. I mean, it's, it's not, I mean, you buy a house, you get a home inspection, don't you? I mean, you'd be a fool not to, unless you're a builder or a contractor and you're experienced. Well, unless you're an RV tech uh, for a living, I'd recommend getting a, a, a third party RV inspection. And I'm not gonna recommend any of them, because, you know, if I did that, then that would kind of be like a conflict of interest on my part. So it's very simple. Just just Google Chattanooga area, because we are considered chat, part of the Chattanooga, Tennessee area. Chattanooga, Tennessee area RV inspection services. And you'll find a list of them. And, you know, most of them are pretty good. There's one or two that are kind of questionable. Um but majority of them are pretty good and you can read their reviews and stuff like that and you can figure out really quick which ones are good, which ones are not. Uh, the ones that don't have good reviews, just, just trust me on that, stay away from them. <laughs> There's a reason why they don't have the good reviews on there. Um, but, you know, and coordinate all that with a salesperson. Don't just call and, and order an inspection without calling and talking to a salesperson. Set everything up, you probably want to leave a deposit on it before setting all that up. Um, so that way it's locked in. But remember guys, no matter what the inspector says, I mean, we only, for the price we sell them for, to keep our prices where we do, we only cover the, those major systems I mentioned earlier. No matter what the inspector says, that's what we cover. So at least that way you know, hey, I'm gonna have to fix this, 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 and this, or you may not have to fix much of anything at all. I don't really think you will on this one. It's a nice unit. Like I said, we're gonna put mattresses in it, put those shocks on it, which are just part of the little things that any used RV you buy, you're gonna have to do. So, uh, anyway, guys, what I'm gonna do is this unit's 59.9, and there's no other fees involved besides what I mentioned earlier. We don't have any upsells. We don't have any extended warranties, gap insurance, tire and wheel protection, none of that stuff that adds uh, 10, 12, 15 thousand dollars to the price. It's not worth the paper it's written on. The only reason that dealers make you feel like you have to buy that stuff and brainwash you is because they got it marked up four or five times dealer cost. They're, they're buying these little warranties wholesale for, uh, you know, usually on a motor home it's twelve to $1,500 dealer cost. Then they turn around and sell it for seven, $8,000 to a consumer. And they're pocketing that profit. That's a huge amount of profit probably just as much as they made selling the RVs what they're making on the warranty or more. And then they're adding it to the loan if they're financing it and they've got the interest rate marked up on the loan one or two percent overchar even overcharging you more. Um, but that's how they make money guys. Nothing a big dealer does is done out of the goodness of their heart without any profit involved. If they, if they get you approved for financing on an RV that's because they're making money on the interest. If they're selling you a warranty because they're making money, they're making money on the cost versus what they're charging you for it, or gap insurance, or anything, vacation packages, or anything like that. Fees, all those fees are nothing but dealer profit, guys. When they charge you dock fees, prep fees, that's just them asking for more money for the RV. It has nothing to do with dock documentation fees or prep fees, none of that. They're just asking for you to pay more for the unit, nothing else. I mean, it's just ripoff fees, just asking for more profit. I've, I've gotten out and walked out of dealerships before when they try to charge me a fee in the car business or buying an RV. 
and I encourage you to do the same thing. I never pay a fee, guys. I'm, I'm 44 years old. I have never paid a fee in my life on any vehicle I've ever bought. Now, I've walked out of plenty of places over that, and some of them have called me back and worked out the deal where I didn't have to pay the fee, and some hadn't, but I've never regretted it because there's always other dealers out there. There's always other RVs, other cars, or whatever you're trying to buy, just like the one you're looking at. So that's the way I look at it. Nobody's obligated to buy anything. They make them every day. But anyway, this unit is 59.9, haggle-free firm, includes our major system inspection, it's plus applicable sales tax. And again, Georgia residents, you do have that highway impact fee and tag and title fee. If you're interested, call us before coming to look. Make sure it's available, 706-965-7929. And um, what I'm going to do, guys, and we do offer nationwide delivery, by the way. That's probably the only other fee we have, and that's optional. If you want it delivered, it's $2 a loaded mile or a dollar a mile round trip. So in other words, if you live uh, 500 miles away, you want it delivered, it's... A thousand mile round trips would be a thousand dollars or 500 miles one way it'd still be a thousand dollars however you want to figure it's thousand dollars <laughs> um and that's just what it cost us by the time we pay our drivers pay pay all the fuel cost and pay for a hotel room if he needs it and getting them back home to the lot i mean we have to pay for that return trip too so like I said, that's as fair as we can be. It doesn't matter if it's local or long distance. It's $2 a mile one way or a dollar a mile round trip, however you can figure it. Again, if you've got questions about anything I discussed on this video, my salespeople are just a simple call away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video for a minute, well, for a few minutes on my end because i got to close everything up with the awning in. I'll bring the slide-out room in and then come back on and show you how to do that. And uh, then I'll get one of my guys to be the cameraman for a few minutes. We'll take it for a drive. So hang tight. I'll be right back. And in the mean, and uh, I will uh, see you in just a second. Oh, by the way, we do have financing with approved credit down payment. Um, and like I said, if you want to know the latest information about rates, terms, down payment requirements, credit requirements, just give one of my salespeople a call. They keep up with that a lot better than I do. So hang tight. I'll be right back. All right, everybody, I got the rooms in and um, pretty standard slide out operation procedure. Of course, first thing you wanna do is go outside and make sure that uh, your awnings are put in, make sure all your outside bays are closed, latched and locked, which I did. And um, if you are at a campground under some trees or something like that, you wanna look up top of your slide out, make sure you don't have any little sticks leaves debris or anything like that that'll damage your slide out seal if you do you probably a little battery powered blower is is a great way to uh clean those off or a broom and a ladder you can also do it low tech solution but once you do all that uh you come back inside and make sure everything is clear and um you can see a little bit of difference with that full wall slide. <laughs> That's the thing, guys. The bigger the slide, the more room it takes in, uh, takes up when it comes in. But you still got a lot of access to everything. But the slide out switch is right here. Um, and what you do, you just push it. It's an electric three track slide system. Just push it and until it comes in all the way and it stops. You know, as with any slide out, you either bring it all the way in or all the way out. There is no in between. So uh, bring it in, guys. Now you do lose this walkway to the bedroom but you can still get to it from the bathroom you still got full access to your bathroom fridge kitchen um you could probably crawl into your bunks and sleep there if you needed to with the rooms in walk back here you can still sleep on your queen bed watch tv you can get to some of your storage you just lose some of it underneath the bed so not bad at all anyway Hang tight, guys. Let me get one of my guys to ride with us. I'll see you in just a second from the driver's seat. All right, everybody. Uh, got my good buddy Shane going to ride with us in this 2016 Thor Chateau. Uh, as always, if y'all got any questions about this motor, I hope you Shane a call or a text. What's your number, Shane? 423-347-8478. And call or text him anytime and he'll answer any questions about this 31E.
And of course, we hit the red light as always. Now, this is a little bit bigger Class C. It's 32 and a half feet long, so. But it still should have plenty of power. I mean, it's still a Ford B10. They got a good air conditioner. I know that. 33,805.7 miles. And we'll take it up this hill and on the interstate. Hit the cruise control, all that good stuff. See how it drives, shifts, brakes, rides, all that good stuff. So I'll give you my opinion about it. You know, one thing I always like, of course, it's not really, it's kind of cloudy right now, but one thing I always like about a cab over is you got instant shade. You don't have to worry about using your visor. These are great, you know, for those of you who want to drive a bigger RV but worry about it at the same time. I mean, you're in a narrower cab than the rest of your RV, so you feel like you're driving a smaller RV than you really are. So. And then you always use your mirrors, your outside mirrors, to judge the width of your RV because your mirrors are the same width as your entire body, are actually a little bit wider. So if your mirrors clear everything, you know the body of the RV will too. Shifts good, five-speed torque shift transmission. Ford's version of an Allison. Good old V10, can't beat them. Thing got a ton of life left to it. Those had Michelin tires on it. Those LTX is the world's worst for picking up gravel and slinging them when you get on the road. <laughs> Great tires, though. Just sitting here cruising at 55. Nobody's business. And we'll get on a little bit going up the interstate. We got on the interstate without a convoy of trucks being all around us. It's got one in front of us, one behind us. Lineman feels good. I'm not pulling, I'm not fighting anything. We're just hitting 65. Let's hit this truck I feel it. I'm not bad at all. That's one thing I do like about a 450 chassis versus a 350. It's a little bit wider wheelbase. So it's a little bit more stable. You don't get blown around by the trucks and stuff here as bad.
brakes feel good. I don't have any rotor shake or anything like that in the steering wheel. Yeah, guys. I think it's a pretty good one. I mean, don't take my word for it. Come drive it for yourself. Um, come out and visit with us, guys. Come check it out. Give Shane a call or a text. Uh, make sure it's available. And with any questions you have, Shane, what's your number? It's 423 347 8478. And uh, thanks for riding along with us, guys. We appreciate it. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, smash it, a thumbs up. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. And look forward to seeing you in beautiful Ringgold, Georgia.